let us just uh, uh, recap what we did in uh, session 1 uh, so in session 1 what we did was um, we uh, learned about uh, uh, basic um, uh, uh, idea about how to execute uh, pro execute a program and how it gets executed inside the system and also we saw how um, source code get uh, finally translated to uh, machine code and um, then the uh, processor starts uh, uh, processing the uh, information okay so uh, that is that was about uh, in in the in the first session so uh, basically in the in the first session we we saw that okay you write code code and save it on the hard disk and uh, from the hard disk uh, when we double click or when we execute uh, the program from command line it gets loaded into the ram and from there uh, processor picks it up from the uh, ram and also there is there, there are two uh, uh, not two there are uh, very few slots of memory in uh, chip and from there uh, the instructions uh, uh, will um, uh, will get calculated okay so that the, the and then also we uh, saw about uh, different uh, states of uh, processes um the, when you process is in the sense when you click on the on the program or when you start running the program program gets created and then uh, it gets terminated uh, the conditions for termination is uh, there are uh, two usual ways to ter terminate a program one is uh, you manually close it uh, by sending a signal uh, that means uh, uh, you can either, either press uh, control c if you are running uh, process on command line or you can simply uh, press x mark that is available on the window so all the uh, all the all the so, uh, softwares or the or the all the windows that you are seeing on your screen is actually process uh, which is actually running in the background okay so uh, we learned about that and then we saw how the machine code looks like uh, machine code is nothing but ones and zeros and it is difficult to since it is difficult to write uh, uh, code in machine code then we move to assembly code and from assembly code it's still uh, tied to certain machine or certain machine architecture so uh, s uh, since there are a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, companies which uh, which produce uh, um, uh, chips and it is difficult to uh, difficult for a pro for a programmer or a, a bunch of programmers to learn all the assembly code that is coming out of uh, uh, factory okay so that is the problem with assembly code uh, it is difficult to uh, difficult to be maintained and uh, higher level languages solve that problem and then uh, there is a portability problem in higher level languages such as c and c plus plus so those problems are solved by java and python by using virtual machines so um, that is what we uh, discussed in the uh, previous uh, session okay so now coming to session 2 uh, in this session we will uh, we will learn about data types um, why do they exist uh, what are the what is the importance of using data type what are variables uh, what are uh, statements and uh, we will also learn about if else statements uh, if else conditions and uh, for uh, and for loop the so uh, looping so all of these things we will learn um, in this session and uh, this is uh, like beginning of the um, uh, python journey actual beginning of the python journey so last class was uh, basically a, a, a foundation stone for uh, all the programming languages and then uh, this uh, this is uh, a, a major um, uh, milestone in uh, learning python so if we know data types uh, and variables and statements and if else conditions we are almost uh, almost uh, like it's learning a complete language okay so then we learn about its features and uh, what are what are all the um, um, uh, different data types and why do they exist okay so let us start with uh, data types so what do i mean by data type um, is that okay whenever we we want to uh, write some program or uh, uh, we want to send an instruction to uh, computer uh, we have uh, we uh, uh, either we can send direct directly uh, those numbers for example if you want to add two numbers 20 plus 30 you can directly send 20 30 and then an instruction to add those so add 20 30 so this instruction you can you can send it to um, cpu but uh, what if you uh, what if you don't know the uh, values of those numbers for example if there is an equation a is equal to um, a is equal to x plus uh, y so you don't know the value of x and y and uh, then but you need to calculate the uh, uh, sum of x and y so the, these are like algebraic equations but uh, the calculation remains the same so for example if you are uh, calculating a percentage uh, for a simple, simple interest 
uh, simple interest uh, uh, for uh, for your bank account actually your, uh, your calculation is the same but the data uh, manju and mute martira hello all right okay thanks uh. okay uh, so um okay we, uh, okay uh, so if you want to do um, uh, if you want to do calculation uh, based on certain equations such as uh, calculating simple interest on your bank, uh, bank account so the calculation remains the same but uh, the amount um, or the uh, principal amount keeps on changing so in such cases this uh, if i want to write an equation so it uh, uh, so we put it into the variables so these are called variables so um, but uh, the problem with the variables is um, uh, so we need to tell that what kind of variable it is for example if you are filling a form uh, a form in uh, in any um, institution institution or for passport or any uh, anything like that what you do is uh, there is a uh, uh, there are different values such as uh, name uh, your age and uh, uh your sex and uh, whether you are married or not so let us take this for uh, uh, examples and try to uh, understand what are data types okay so when you when you say name so you will not write any number or any uh, any calculation there you, you usually write your name and then you come to uh, uh the question next question saying uh, asking for age so if your age is uh, say uh, 23 or uh, 35 whatever it is so you will write it in numbers okay so uh, and also there will be only a, uh, two or three boxes for to fill fill up the age so now uh, the number of boxes um, actually uh, maps to uh, the the size of the array uh, sorry no, not size of the array it's uh, size of the variable okay so uh, this is what defines the data type that means um, what i'm t- essentially telling is okay this variable is going to consume this much uh, of data and uh, it helps cpu to uh, pull that data and uh, add it into its uh, registers so uh, for example uh, if you have 32 bit uh, chip that means 32 bit chip uh, actually means that that chip can read 32 signals at a time so uh, for example uh, let us see an uh, see an image of uh, chip so this is this is this is how your processor looks like okay so um, the number the legs are nothing but they are connected on to the motherboard and uh, this legs actually consume or we, we send uh, signals or we send voltages inside that and uh, we also send uh, what kind of uh, uh, calculation it needs to be done so if you want to add two numbers what you uh, typically do is you send two numbers in form of binary numbers and also you send an instruction say you want to add two numbers so you will send an instruction add and then uh, followed by two uh, numbers so those two numbers it will uh, try to store it in its um, uh, registers and then it will uh, uh, it will uh, do that particular calculation okay so that is what the chip does so in order to uh in order to understand uh, so uh, chip needs to load uh, the signals into its registers right so uh, to execute that instruction it needs to know how big is the uh, number or how big is the uh, character so how to do th- this that is why there are data types so data types are nothing but an instruction to uh, uh, cpu uh telling that okay this is this is how big is uh, big is my data and this is what you need to uh calculate okay so in order to calculate something you need to know the size of those uh, variables okay so the the example that i was giving was uh, uh, you have a, uh, you have a form uh, and you are filling your uh, number uh, so, sorry you are filling your uh, age which is your, your number for example if you don't uh, fill your number instead of your instead of number if you fill something like uh, uh, your, your name instead in those two boxes 
the person who is uh, analyzing that form or he is trying to uh, put that entry into his uh, computer he will uh, he will he will reject that form that means it's an because it is an invalid value for that uh, particular uh, number of boxes okay so this is the essence of uh, essence of uh, um, uh, data types so we need to know uh, how big is the data okay that is the story story here so integer is nothing but a number uh, this is this is uh, an example from c++ and uh, we will come to uh, come to python uh, and see what how python solves this problem okay so um, integer takes for four bytes uh, float takes four bytes double takes eight eight bytes boolean take one byte on all these things you don't have to remember this but uh, uh, you, sh you should know that uh, they consume different uh, uh, lengths of memory okay so um, once we write this program and we uh, compile it uh, so there is there are two processes one is compilation and uh, one is in uh, one once it starts uh, r running in the memory so there is compilation and there is also a runtime uh, thing happening so at the compilation time you already uh, you should be already knowing how big is the data that uh, that the program is going to send it to the uh, cpu but in python there is uh, there is one uh, uh, optimization since python runs on virtual machine what python does is you don't need to give uh, or uh, instruct um, uh, telling that okay uh, the, the the data type uh, you don't have to define the data type but it is going to automatically detect data type and then automatically assign uh, this many bytes uh, automatically so this happens inside the uh, python uh, interpreter or python virtual machine okay so um uh, this is one of the advantages of python so the such languages w which just uh, assign directly and uh, automatically detect the types and types are detected at the runtime runtime in the sense when you are running a pro program so these languages are called as dynamically typed languages for example c++ is statically typed languages because you need to specify how uh, how big is the uh, data um, that you are sending to cpu so before even running the program so at compile time itself uh, uh, you should know how, how big is the data okay so in python it's not necessary because python has a, a virtual machine running on top of it so let us look at uh, types of data types uh, so integer is nothing but a number here uh, start oh, it's classified into a uh, uh, couple of uh, uh, data types one is numeric numeric data type it can be an integer such as age um, a complex number such, such as that we use in uh, mathematics a float is nothing but uh, uh like this for example pi uh, value of pi is is, is a float 3.14 is a is a float a dictionary is nothing but uh, uh it, it's it's actually a uh it's not exactly a dat data type but uh in python we call it as data type uh dictionary is actually um uh, a key value pair that means <coughs> as the as the name says dictionary you have a key uh to be searched and you have a value for that for example, uh, if you are searching for uh, um, meaning of aeroplane in uh, in a dictionary, you will go to uh, uh, the pages that uh, the words that are uh, uh, starting from A, E and then uh, uh, which are starting from R and O and you incrementally search and then finally you fire reached aeroplane and then you uh, see the value. Okay, so this kind of values are called key, uh, key and value. So this is a key value pair. So, for example, if you you, you can also uh, define some data such as okay, your name uh, name is a key, and also the values uh, you can also put it as like age and uh, uh, sex. So uh, these things you can uh, put it in a key value pair. So such things are called, such data structure is called as dictionary. Boolean is nothing but uh, true or false value. For example. Um, uh, if in the form, if uh, uh, if the form is asking for your marital status, such as if there are two only two values, married or unmarried, so either you say uh, true or false. If it is uh, married question mark, then uh, yes or else no. So this is uh, nothing but boolean. Boolean means only zero or one. Okay, so that is about boolean. Set is another data type where uh, where you can store 
collection of data uh, for example uh, uh, you can you can collect a uh, lot of uh, different co colors of uh, uh, say different uh, uh, colors of t-shirts or uh, any shoes and uh, if you do not have any duplicates it's called one set so uh, you can say i have one set of clothes because it doesn't have any uh, uh, any duplicates okay so this property of set is uh, is in such a way that it is it is a collection and uh, it is not in an uh, ordered form that means it is not in a sorted order such as uh, uh, say if you give 1 2 3 and uh, 1 2 3 uh, in an, in a sequence and directly put those uh, values into the set so order won't remain it can it can uh, 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 it can place it in uh, any order it can place it it does like 2 3 1 or in any order so this is an unordered uh, data type but the advantage here is uh, the set doesn't contain any duplicates so if you want to add a new number which is already existing it won't uh, update its uh, 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 group or it don't update its uh, data type okay so that is the advantage of set and um, strings are nothing but uh, collection of uh, characters that means uh, uh, say uh, our names uh, or street names all these things are uh, strings so strings uh, strings are just a collection of char characters okay so yeah uh, if i want to write uh, digan i just uh, put it in in quotes and assign it to variable in the in python okay so uh, coming to list a list is nothing but collection of uh, collection of different kinds of uh, data types so all these other data types a list can uh, aggregate it okay so if you, you can imagine that you, you have a box and uh, box contains different fruits uh, apple orange uh, banana grapes and all these things so that box is called as a list so it's a it's a it's a aggregator of uh, uh, of other data types okay tuple is same as list but uh, you cannot change the values of tuple but in list you can change the values the reason that uh, tuples cannot uh, uh, the values inside the tuple cannot be changed uh, is because they use uh, constants in the sense that uh, say uh, say for example uh, uh, the location of uh, my home is always constant in terms of uh, longitude and uh, uh, latitude okay so if i want to uh, represent some uh, data which is uh, always con constant i would uh, uh, go for uh, tuples okay so this is the generic uh, generic uh, uh, idea about uh, the properties and uh, um, uh, 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 idea about the data types we will see how to use it in the program in uh, in coming uh, uh, slides okay and there is another uh, small uh, uh, small topic that is, uh, so some words cannot be used as variable names okay we will see that in on uh, when we start executing the program so these are reserved uh, 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 very uh, keywords and this cannot be used as variable names as simple as that okay so okay so let us uh, get into uh, the program okay So let me just uh, open the terminal. Okay, great. Okay, this is called uh, uh, this is called uh, terminal or uh, command line interface. Okay, so you can open Python interpreter uh, like this. And uh, just to do some exercises or just to check something, we use interpreters just to send some commands to uh, the Python interpreter. Okay, so let us uh, start with uh, uh, integer. Uh, so integer is nothing but a number, say for example, a is equal to 2. So if there is a number, that means it's an integer. Okay, so this is an example for uh, float. So, okay, now anything that uh, uh, follows. So if you want to see the type of that particular uh, variable, you just put type and see that's an A is an integer and uh, type of B is a float. Okay. So this is how you find out the uh, type of um, variables. The reason that uh, we are, uh, so in uh, C, C++ we, uh, we need to uh, define an integer like this, A is equal to 2. Okay, but it won't work here because this is Python terminal. Okay, 
so let us come to uh, the uh, other interesting data types uh, so one of the data types that we discussed was a list okay so uh, let us declare a variable uh, called as my list and then uh, the so lists are nothing but uh, uh, collection of data and they are represented uh, as like this there are two square brackets and uh, uh, enclosed uh, any data that is enclosed within the square brackets is a list okay so uh, and separated by commas okay for example 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay. So you can see the elements inside the list. So you can also see that duplicates are allowed inside the list. Okay. So this is a type of a, a list. And uh, just to uh, double check whether you have declared the right data structure, you can just do this. Okay. This is list. And also you can modify. Uh, elements of uh, list for example if i want to access first element i would say it is a uh, it, it is called an uh, uh, it's called as an index that means you can access these elements using uh, uh, using uh, number that means this is zeroth element first element second element third element fourth element like that so this is a sequential uh, uh, sequential data type so to access first element you, it usually starts from zero all the indexes in computer it starts from zero okay so if I say uh, list 20, it will give a, give me an error telling that, okay, this is an index error and the list is list index is out of range. That That is because I have only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 elements. Okay. So ninth element is, ninth element is actually 8, 8th element. Okay. So last element is that. Okay. You can also access that with minus 1. Minus 1 is like counting counting uh, uh, counting from uh, behind okay so minus one and minus two so this this feature is only in python in other languages uh, it doesn't uh, we, uh, we don't have that feature okay so that is about uh, list and how do we access it and also i can change the value to say and if i try to print my list and you can see that okay the second element from uh, last is is modified so let us see if this is true in case of uh, set. Okay. Set is represented by flower brackets. One, two, three. Uh, again, two, three, four, five, 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 five. Okay. So as we discussed before, uh, set is an is a, it is a data type which is which doesn't maintain order, but its speciality is that uh, it will it will it will uh, remove all the duplicates okay let us see if it's doing that okay so my initialization was this but what i got was one two three four five okay so this is how the uh, the this is how the uh, this is the, what is the property of set okay so if i want to add a new number i can use uh, set and then again i can see okay let me try to add the same number again so we cannot have duplicates so when you try to insert a number uh, into the set um, we get uh, uh, we don't get anything because it doesn't allow any duplicates okay so that is the property of set so now uh, uh, just remember this list is nothing but uh, uh, a collection of elements represented by uh, square brackets enclosed in square brackets and separated by commas uh, set is nothing but uh, similarly we have floor brackets and then we have uh, things separated by comma and uh, let us see about tuples what are tuples are uh, even some people call this call it as uh, tuples but uh, i prefer it calling the tuples okay three four five six okay this is an example of tuple so tuple is okay, my tuple is very mistake okay. my tuple so tuple is nothing but collection of items which are enclosed within the uh, within the normal braces that we use and it is same as list but only the bracket uh, convention is uh, changed okay so this is how the tuple looks 
so we also discussed that the tuple uh, inside tuple uh, we can access elements like this so the second element is nothing but actually this is third element because the indexing starts from 0 0 1 2 3 so the third element is uh, 5 so it is giving me fifth element okay so let us try to modify this okay so i am trying to mod modify uh, this, uh, the third element into something like uh, 6 so it is throwing an error telling that okay uh, in tuple uh, i am trying to add an item but uh, uh, this is the constant object so you cannot add any values into the tuple so so that is that is how the, uh, tuple is uh, defined and uh, uh, we use tuple okay so these are all the properties that just we just discussed and uh, uh, we are trying to uh, put it in, uh, onto the python screen and we are uh, trying it out so let us see how the dictionary looks uh, so dictionary uh, i can i can i can say something like okay, uh, dictionary is nothing but uh, uh, nothing but uh, it is it looks like a uh, set but you have two values that is key value and uh, uh, a key and a value okay so for key you can give something like okay uh, name followed by colon and this is the value okay so you can add more So this is how a dictionary looks so you can also um, find out the type of uh, that uh, okay. so it's a, it tells it's 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 a dictionary okay so um, now how do we access the element say for example in dictionary you want to search you know, so, so think that uh, we have uh, say about 1 million entries here or uh, maybe even more or even thousands or hundreds of elements so just to access that you can just say name so when once you search for name it will return the value so that is the property of uh, dictionary and also you can change the values of the dictionary um, test new value okay now if you see we have added a new value so uh, you can change the value but you cannot change the key uh, and also you can uh, you can uh, remove the key or you can just uh, remove the first element just by the, or you can remove the element by just by uh, giving its key for example i want to remove the entry called as name so if i do that in the dictionary we do, do not have that element anymore because we started from this we had two elements now we do not have uh many elements okay so this is how uh the the uh, the various operations and the properties of uh, different data types okay so we covered uh we covered uh all the data types such as uh dictionary boolean uh, boolean we didn't cover boolean is nothing but it's very simple say uh so let us define status it's true okay to find out uh, the type of the variable you can simply say true you can say it's it tells it's it's a pool okay so you can change its uh, its status to false as well so we have false okay so that is about uh, uh, we saw all this uh, integers boolean set uh, strings strings are uh, yeah anyways these are strings actually string is nothing but uh, So if you see the type of s type is a keyword uh, so you, you can get the type of so these things are necessary to know uh, in order to make a decision uh, on uh, what kind of data you we are operating and uh, what is the what is the what is the best uh, data type that we are uh, we want to uh, we want to um, select okay for example for age 
the best data type is nothing but integer okay for name we select a string for uh, say if you want if you if you have if you have a, a, a list of uh, uh, say uh, students then uh, you choose a list and uh, maybe uh, i was giving this example in uh, last class so uh, say for example you have uh, there is a uh, you, uh, all your classmates are tweeting something and uh, actually there are only uh, only few tweets such as uh, they are tweeting about uh, or, uh, say there are uh, two or three classes got cancelled so uh, chemistry class is cancelled mathematics class is cancelled and uh, some other subject is got cancelled but if there are 100 students in the class so all of them are actually tweeting the same thing so you want to know what is that what is the tweet that uh, students are tweeting and what are the uh, unique items in that okay so you want to remove all the duplicates in such cases you can use set you can just get all the data from uh, twitter uh, and uh, see your classmates uh, filter on that and then you can put it in this in the set set will give you unique elements that are uh, inside uh, that are uh, inside the data set that means here we, we get only uh, uh, only three values that is which which classes are cancelled okay so that is a use case of uh, set um, uh, so we spoke about dictionary so the also you can uh, you can uh, aggregate uh, these data types for example list can contain a list of my list of dictionaries uh, say uh, I have a uh, uh, dictionary already uh, I can say dictionary 2 okay simple dictionary I'll create a simple dictionary uh, A's value is uh, 1 B's value is uh, is two okay so uh, i can actually uh aggregated list is equal to who i can say zero two and five okay when i do see i have got a list which is nothing but it has it contains two elements which are nothing but ma uh, maps or dictionaries inside them we have uh, again two values so i can i can aggregate this it's like uh, putting a putting a box inside box and box inside box so it's like a big container and then you can put as many containers inside that and in, those containers contain the uh, curtain boxes and then those curtain boxes contain again uh, uh, say uh, some valuable goods such as uh, if you're ordering from uh, amazon you get uh, all the different uh, say you're ordering laptop or you're ordering uh, uh, clothes or anything so you have just small small boxes but from outside uh, we just see the container okay so uh, actually you can contain uh, any number of uh, dictionaries or any number what whatever the kind into whatever the kind that you want okay so string is uh, uh, but you cannot uh, aggregate uh, say list into the string because string is a is, is a basic data type so string integer uh, boolean and uh, float all these are basic data types and all others are derived data types so actually we are using a string here this is this is a string this is this whole thing is a value inside uh, in, uh, inside a inside a map key value pair and this whole thing is a list okay so you can add so usually in uh, in your programs what we do is we uh, we deal with a lot of uh, different data types and uh, uh, the levels are like maybe there are there is uh, five six levels of uh, 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 aggregation such as list is containing map and inside the map there is again um, a map and inside that there is a list and inside that there is there are some strings and uh, things like that okay so you, we can aggregate uh, to whatever level that uh, uh yeah, the program needs okay so that is about briefly about uh data types okay so uh, uh any questions so far even if it is a uh, it, it is very uh, if you think if it's a silly question please ask uh, it, it doesn't matter
so uh, i guess uh, there are no questions um okay so let us uh, move into uh, if else conditions uh, and then why do we need if else conditions and then um, then we will move to uh, looping okay so the necessity of if else condition is because to control the pro program uh, uh, to to con uh, to control the program structure okay so uh, what is a program structure say uh, let us take a simple example okay so si simple example would be uh, say uh, my mom asks me to get a uh, get a packet of milk from a shop okay so uh, she also says that if you don't get milk there you go you go to a uh, next shop and then get the milk okay so i take my uh, say i take 20 rupees and go to first shop and check if the milk is available or not if it is available then i won't go to the next shop okay so only if it is not available i'll go to next shop and take it so my uh, my uh, uh the, my route is changing actually my execution is changing so i go to first and there is a condition and only then either i go there or uh, or uh, come back to home so this decision making is nothing but is made from uh, if else okay so how if else uh, uh, works is uh, very simple okay i will just uh, write this here uh, forget about uh, this this was the exercise i did for the last class okay. all right okay so uh, let us take a very simple example uh, let us call it as shop um, say we have shop number uh, uh, so the, our task is to uh, find out uh, if this variable shop is an even number if that shop number is even or if it is an odd, odd number okay that's all okay so uh, when we when we uh, the, uh, write if condition the idea is the format is that if the to find out whether the number is uh, even or odd is simple just uh, you use this operator this is operator is also called as modulus operator and it gives the remainder of uh, the division so if you get uh, if you get zero it is a uh, even number or uh, if you get one it is an uh, odd number okay so that is a simple logic so uh, from 23 uh, if it is an even number i go here or else i execute this statement okay so how do i uh, know that uh, how does the computer know that I need to execute two statements instead of one? Okay, in C C plus plus, what happens is uh, what how we write this uh, particular program is like this. So we do not use a colon. I can say I use blocks in, in C plus plus, and uh, I can also put it here, and I can also put all these things in single line. Okay. So in C++, I can put the code, everything in the in a single line, okay. So how does CS, uh, C++ know that, okay, these instructions belong to this if condition, okay. For example, uh, I went I went to the shop, I got uh, milk, so the, and I give him uh, money and I collect change. So there are three instructions, okay. So one is uh, get milk, give money and take change okay so these three instructions must be uh, executed if the condition that if there is milk available is true so if there is milk available do these three things so these three instructions are carried out in c++ or any language by, by looking at this flower brackets so it says okay if this is true whatever instructions are enclosed in between these two brackets execute it so that is the idea okay so, but in uh, in Python, as we discussed in, uh, in last session, Python also uh, Python has a restriction that uh, restriction on developers that okay, you, uh, instead of you uh, using uh, flower brackets, uh, which makes a uh, uh, program to be read very difficult. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it uh, it uh, it uh, slows down the readability. Okay, so what we do is 
uh, we simply uh, end that if statement with colon and we use spaces consistent spaces that means if i use four spaces in the for one instruction uh, or statement uh, in the next uh, in the statement the same number of spaces should be used to indicate to the uh, python compiler that okay these statements belong to the same block okay so that is how uh, python detects that i need to execute this many number of statements after this condition okay so once these are executed this won't get executed because you don't uh, in the in the previous analogy we don't go to the second stop even if there is milk okay so uh, if i get milk i can i just come back so else if i don't get milk i go to the else condition so i don't even need to do uh, the other two instructions such as giving him uh, uh, money and correcting change so that is uh, automatically uh, understood by humans but for computers we need to tell very specifically so that is the uh, that is the idea about if else condition okay so uh, let us come to uh, come to uh, uh, looping looping is nothing but uh, if i need to execute this statement okay this whole statement not for just one shop imagine i have five shops in the area or uh, even better example uh, if you are doing a research on uh, say uh, quality of food in all the shops what you will do is you will go to all the shops uh, in your area and collect some samples say uh, you are collecting uh, some uh, groundnut uh, samples and then you come and do your research work so how do you uh, what do you do in each shop is the same thing you go to the, uh, you go to that shop you give him uh, money and you collect the groundnut and collect the change and come back okay so these three instructions are all are always true for all the shops so you don't uh, in the computer if you if you want to write uh, you don't need to write something like uh, okay for shop number 23 you do this and so for shop number 24 uh, you do this and for shop number uh, uh, 25 you do this so if you start writing like this see the same instruction set is getting repeated it is repeated here it is repeated for shop 2 shop 23 and things like that so the necessity uh, so uh, uh, the the problem here is we are doing the same thing again and again and the and the code grows uh, very big and uh, 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 and uh, if there is a bug somewhere in uh, one area you have to fix it in all the places okay Say if you uh, so say if uh, there is an instruction to also to collect uh, uh, say uh, uh, if you want to uh, collect one more item say if, for example you go to, uh, you, your mom also asks to get curd uh, as well as milk then you have to put milk get curd get milk and then uh, and put it everywhere so in all the shops you need to put that conditions and then you need to run the program so there is a duplicate uh, duplicated effort. Okay, so how do we do this? Automate this in one shot is using loops. Okay, so let me just uh, undo this. Okay, I will just uh, comment this. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, okay, we will also demonstrate if else condition here. So the the essence of looping is because we we don't need a duplicated code and we need to maintain it in a single place. Okay, so let us uh, say uh, this is uh, this is these are all shop numbers one two three four five, and for each shop you are going to do the same thing. Say that the the same instructions that you are doing right here. Okay, so how do we tell that? How do you tell the for loop that uh, what are the instructions to carry out? It's just the same as uh, that we discussed if whatever is um, coming after this column and followed by these uh, sp uh, consistent spaces, I just uh, execute all of them. Okay, so if I have a new statement here, this is I uh, this means that. Uh, This means that this does not belong to this for loop because 
there is no consistent spacing that that means there is no spacing here okay so to make this this instruction also part of, of uh, for loop i will put it here okay. so that is how the uh, looping is done and uh, the uh, we contain the number of instructions inside the loop so let us try to uh, the, so that was uh, all uh, 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 writing the code and uh, sh showing you the uh, uh, theory so the, let us let us get uh, uh, get it executing okay so these are actually very simple pro uh, problems okay. so uh, they, the program execution is simple you type python and then you give the file name Okay, there is another um, program below okay. i'll come to this so uh, just uh, look at this part okay so what it is doing is it is going to so the format is simple uh, i need to give the i need to give whatever i'm iterating this could be list or this could be dictionary this could be any anything that is in sequence okay so uh, the anything that is in in a, in, in a collection so uh, it can be uh, list it can be tuples it can be even sets it can be even uh, dictionary or anything if you have multiple elements you can iterate through it that means you can uh, look one by one okay so that is the uh, idea behind um, the for loop so you get you give the 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 structure is for so this is your variable that means the, uh, uh, this is not part of uh, this you, it's like you are taking one element and assigning to assigning to this and uh, in the next uh, next uh, uh, um, uh, iteration you take the second element and assign to it so this is a variable and then on that variable we are doing this um, calculations okay so the this is how the for loop looks like and uh, i will tell you uh, uh, there is there is one more way to uh, use loops which is also called as while loop so while loop and for loop are actually same, but uh, uh, the, the why uh, for the same thing uh, you you have uh, two types of uh, looping is because of the history. Um, initially in assembly code we used to have something like uh, uh, there were no indentations or brackets or anyways. We what we used to do is uh, we used to create uh, labels. Uh, label say uh, here, here is a type of label and then i can write something like uh, add a b um, move uh, b to c and something like this okay and then i can say uh, jmp uh, here okay this is how a typical uh, looping uh, looping happens in assembly level language that means uh, even if you don't know assembly level language it's simple here so if you want to if you want to uh, uh, execute this line by line what you will do is okay you will see this okay label okay i have defined the label here so this is the label and uh, so below the uh, below that there is an instruction add a b and uh, move ac i will execute uh, these two instructions and i will see this keyword okay the, i have jump and then there is a location where to jump and here is nothing but uh, here so it will again go back to uh, uh, line number 28 here in this case okay so as long as uh, there is no break statement so uh, i can say break when a equals to something like a equals to uh, say 3 okay so this can be my instruction to break out of loop or else it will all keep looping till the till the computer is uh, switched on okay so that is how uh, our computer switched on or uh, or the uh, process is running uh, okay so this is how the typical for loop is written okay and then this was automated in terms of uh, jump uh, while loop uh, that is uh, that is here from 21 uh, okay, yeah, okay so for this uh, any loop has three elements one is initialization condition uh, that means uh, from where the loop uh, what is the initial condition for loop here uh, for example if you want to run uh, five rounds in a, in a in a running race it's like okay you have a, tot a total target of five uh, laps to run so um, if, if uh, my lap is not equal to say zero that means uh, five rounds 
you keep running here so i will just uh, execute this okay um, i'll just remove this so question there is something all right so you can see that after this after this line just focus on the, uh, after this line um, so i have printed it here so that was the old program so in the first what the what are the instruction that is getting executed in this while loop is in the, in the first uh, instruction we are just printing the lap that means the lap number five so this is my first round and uh, what i'm doing is uh, i'm decrementing lap by one so lap is equal to lap minus one if i have five it gets reduced to four now uh, the property of loop is to go back to the um, to the to the uh, initial uh, line uh, so it will check for this condition okay so if this condition is true uh, this will uh, go to uh, execute the same thing until this this condition is uh, not true uh, it won't break so the breaking condition here is nothing but uh, this should uh, this should be false that means uh, lap is not equal to zero right so if this becomes uh, uh, false, uh, so so when uh, lap uh, uh, lap finally becomes uh, uh, minus uh, minus one, then uh, it is not equal to zero. So it will it will stop executing. Okay, so that is how um, uh, that is how the uh, 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 a loop structure uh, is uh, uh, is made. So. Any loop must have a initialization condition and uh, uh, and a breaking condition. That means here the condition, and then set of instructions. Okay. So now, if you want to translate the same while loop into the for loop, so you might be thinking that where is the where is my initialization condition here? So Python automatically detects the initialization condition. That means if you want to iterate through uh, an, a list of numbers, that means it by default. It sets its uh, initial pointer to uh, a pointer to uh, one here. That is that is the zeroth element, and uh, starts uh, starts uh, taking these numbers one by one, and then it executes it here. Okay, so actually the for loop is shortcut for while loop. Okay, so that is how you can learn. So you do you don't need to uh, use both of the loops. Usually for loop is enough for anything. Okay, so that was just about uh, loops. So, is there any any kinds of doubts or any kinds of questions? Uh, please ask, because uh, there is an assignment on this, and there are few uh, problems uh, which are uh, around uh, data types and uh, uh, for uh, for and uh, while loops.